What is up, rockers? Welcome back here to another Rise of Kingdoms content. In today's video, we're gonna open up a conversation about a Manator and about this commander's pairing. So if you guys don't know, I've recently got a Manator here in Rise of Kingdoms. It's the newest Archer Garrison. But I've been contemplating of what type of equipments or what type of gear I'm gonna be using a Manator. So I've opened up some discussion with other players and we're gonna entertain those ideas. So in this video, it's gonna be about a Manator's gear and I wanna know what's your opinion at this moment. What type of gear do you think is best suited for a Manator? And also I want you guys to comment in the comment section below, why do you think that is the case as well? Let's have an open discussion in here and I'm going to put out some of my ideas as well in this video. My name is Shinchi42. I am here in 1412. A lot of migrants came here from our recruitment video. It's absolutely insane. And maybe others that are, you know, being recruited as well outside of the video. But I want to say welcome to everybody who has come here in 1412. What an amazing kingdom. And it's going to be very, very interesting on what's to come in 1412. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and turn your notification on. So as you guys know, I already have a dagger and a skullless coin. All right, so I have the lucky skullless coin and I have the concealed dagger. Now with this two item, it had worked really well for me with my Artemisia. Now that a Manator is here, what is the best equipment should we have for a Manator in the garrison pairing it up with Artemisia? Now. Some had said that a Manator primary is better because of the rage region. Now for me, when I saw the testing with a Manator and or Artemisia being the primary, I didn't really saw a huge significant differences, but perhaps in a much, much longer rally, we would be able to see much huge differences. In our testing, what we have seen is that Artemisia did slightly better than the Amanator in a specific combination pairing that we have tested it against with. But I wanna know more data because I know majority of you guys are doing a lot of testing. So please do share us the data. This is a community. This is where we're gonna discuss on what we think on our like new metas and new setup is. So I don't have the complete full answer at the moment. I just know what I have tested with and I know what I saw. So I wanna get more data from you guys if it's possible. If any of you guys wish to send me a message on Discord, feel free to do it as well. Now, we're gonna talk about the equipments in here. So we're gonna talk about the dagger. We're gonna talk about the skullless coin. We're gonna talk about many, many equipments in here. So let's go into the blacksmith and let's talk about the equipments. So before the KVK had ended, in the accessory, I actually made a purchase, which I purchased the Horn of Fury. And I also purchased a concealed dagger so I can refine my previous concealed dagger. So I have a basic understanding of what i want if i want to do a complete rage engine for a manitor so that we can have her cast more frequently have artemisia cast frequently what you can do is a horn of fury and another thing is that you can do the war drums i haven't used this yet but based on my understanding that this war drums will also give you a 10% chance to grant 50 rage and also two of your nearby allies. So we had some questions about this to the devs and they said that your march will also get the 50 rage. So in that scenario, you can definitely create a rage engine equipment using the Horn of Fury and as well as the Karawak war drums. No, there are many items in here that I would highly consider for that combination. Now, one thing that I love, and I think one of the most OP um, OP um, assess accessories in here is the Concealed Dagger. What I like about the Concealed Dagger is that it can reduce the health's target by 5%. So if the Rallier is then receiving a Dagger debuff, then that Rallier will have 5% health and it can stack up to three times 
And what you can do if there are swarms is that the swarm can definitely take advantage of it whenever, I mean, you'll never know, but you just have to swarm it. Then, you know, you can take advantage of it by swarming the rally and reduce the health. All right. Another thing is normal attack damage. This is actually a good one as well. Now, this is an equipment called Greatest Glory. You can get this from the Season Shop as well. This will increase normal attack damage. Now, when we say normal attack damage, though, this is going to be the numbers that you see that is so frequently when you're doing the battle. Um, with a normal attack damage, you're only buffing that turn by turn. No counter attack in here. No skill attack. This is really good as well because this is going to be a consistent stack of damage at 5% normal attack damage. Although, if there is a all attack damage, that would be much, much better because then your skills counterattack are also being taken into an effect. Skill damage is similar to normal attack damage, but this thing is only buffing anything that is skill related. So there's a kind of like the, the you know, the, the takeaway from those two. So you can definitely do a skills damage as well. Um, but I think it's better in my opinion to have more proc of rage to accumulate the rage and proc it more often because if you can proc it sooner than later before it going down onto the health of your your garrison then you can cast uh basically you can hit harder in the early early turns let's say you are being rallied let's say you're just your city is being rallied the more rage you can accumulate in the beginning turns if you can cast your rage uh, sorry, if you can cast your skills more frequently, let's say you hypothetically, this is not a game scenario, but hypothetically you can do a uh, three turns right away before one cast, but it's, it's not probably going to be like that, but it will be eventually as the, the battle drags on, once you're accumulating more rage, you can cast it faster than the opponent. So with that being said, if you can cast a skill early, you'll have more troops, meaning more damage because as your troops goes down, your damage also reduces. So it's a great idea to stack up onto the Rage as well. We know Rage uh, is a big thing, and this is why we look at the Commander's primary skill majority of the time as well, plays a big role in the battlefield. So now we can also look into the Mora's Web. This is normal attack, have 30% chance to reduce target's defense by 4%, and march speed of cavalry units by 8%, which isn't gonna be an effect when you are garrisoning. Stack up to three times, so 4% defense, 30% chance. So, I think this is better. 5% chance, 30%, right? So, if you're gonna pick into two, I would rather go for the health in my opinion, plus you get at least that one more extra percent. Skullless Lucky Coin, I really like the Skullless Lucky Coin. Um, this thing can really absorb a lot of damage. There was some battle report one time, I forgot which one it is already, I just vaguely remember now, is that somebody had a dagger, concealed dagger. It's funny because when it procced, my coin also procced at the same time, and I was able to absorb the damage that was dished out to me. So the Skullless Lucky Coin will save your butt. But in this type of combo, I feel like you want to be able to cast Rage as fast as you can and hit that damage as well. Because one of the big thing in here as well with a Manitor is that this skill, upon taking skill damage, and I've looked into the battle reports, it does whenever Artemisia does hit herself, that thing does proc very well. Now, Vengeance, this is more of a counter attack. This is, again, a passive skill similar similar to the item that we just looked at with the greatest glory this is a passive vengeance this is a passive item um, attributes similar to the one that we had just looked into like the greatest glory now this is a passive one i like this one as well it's an eight percent counter attack damage but since this is going to be one of those um you know if you're defending into a flag or garrison anyway most of the time players do not do not swarm it but when you do get swarmed, then this is plays a big role because the counterattack damage is then being decreased to every single marches that are attacking you. But at the end of the day, I don't think this is going to be the most efficient equipment for the Amanator Artemisia combination. The war drums that we have mentioned, I feel like this is going to be really good and the rage engine, but still need to be tested because I haven't really tested this yet. This is all more, uh, this is pretty much a theory right now. So whoever has the war drums or has the horn, 
I want you guys to do some testing. If you guys have the ability to do it, because I'm very interested to see it. Another item that I almost missed um, is the Ring of Doom. I'm adding this at the end. So the Ring of Doom... Um, normal attack have 10% chance to increase damage by 50% for 2 seconds. This is another huge, huge value if it's equipped. Because then that huge 50% increased damage of the normal attack. But the key thing in here as well, this is only normal attack. So this is not going to add up for the skill damage and counter damage. So the white hits that you're going to see will be increased here 50% for 2 seconds, can trigger up to 1 times in 5 seconds of period. Now, I am not the biggest fan of the Ring of Doom, and I know many players do like the Ring of Doom, so maybe you can give us an opinion here in the ch chat, in the chat, so that we can see what's your opinion on the Ring of Doom when you are placing it with the Amanitor and Artemisia. For me, I have the Ring of Doom, but it's not one of my favorite compared to going for like a dagger because I do prefer this has a higher probability. This has a lower probability with a higher impact. The last item in here, the set's called. This is another item that I think would be really good as well. Attack has a 10% chance to grant all this commander's troop and up to two nearby allies 10% increase attack for three seconds. One thing that I want to say in here is that this attack will buff up three things normal skill counter all right when these systems say anything just saying a vague attack that should amplify the three things that we have mentioned and why do i say that thing is nice because when that thing do proc you will definitely amplify the combination for that battle by increasing that attack and especially if it lands in the proper proc when the skill do hits because that's going to be really, really a deadly weapon. I don't think many people have really talked about that one. But if you do look into it, it is a nice equipment to have. I don't know who has investment into this. So for now, I think my ultimate setup will be um, I will be doing a dagger and horn. Because we want to be able to cast more rage. I think one day I will probably get the set's call. Because this is another great, great setup. Now imagine if, if you are being rallied. Right, and then you have a counter rally, right? In the same alliance, then you're also going to buff that counter rally that you have with increased 10% attack. So I'll leave you guys to that. I want to know what you guys actually think about our discussion here today. If you guys have any opinions, different strategies, different approaches, please do let me know in the comment section below. Feel free to send me a message into Discord. I'd love to have some discussion as well. Send me some testing, some battle reports. I'd definitely love to get into Dive Down and Nerd Out with you guys there. So join our Discord. Consider subscribing if you are new. If you're enjoying the contents that we have, smash that thumbs up. But anyway, rockers, I will see you again next time.